excellent is thy name. Father, it's in the mighty name of Jesus. We come this very hour. Scripture is already opened up. The avenues and the path and the thought waves that we must take to realize we're on this Palm Sunday. Lord have mercy. Many things would happen before the Son of Man would come to free the world. We thank you today for all that's been said and done. And Lord, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, speak to us, through us, with us, and for us. That we may do the will and the work that you've called us to do. Hide me within your bosom. That these, your children, will see nothing of me but all of you. Strengthen me where I'm weak. Build me where I may be torn down. But most of all, Master, let some soul be set free. And that they will want no more other than to serve you all the days of their lives. This we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Somebody say amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. We've heard the passage of Scripture. And throughout this world and throughout the land and throughout history, this has been a known time of year as we move into the celebration of a risen Savior. The passage earlier read, amen, was... was Telling us what God had actually done and, and how they had mocked and, and the thieves there on the cross. Come on, tell the story, Pastor. And the story is well known throughout time, but I want to, for a few minutes, take you to an area where it correlates, but Matthew cross-references what Luke is already talking about. But I don't want you to miss something that is of vital importance. Now keep your mind on the text that was read. But I want to show you something that the Lord been dealing with me with for about two or three months here now. And I love that when when you can always learn something else about what you've already read. Do I have a witness out there? Amen. Scripture has a way of not confusing anybody. People will tell you that it's contradictory, but I beg to differ. You just have to wait on the Holy Ghost. Because if God wanted you to know beforehand, he would have already told you. But Matthew opens up the very beginning of this, what Luke tells us about, or was telling us about there with the thief on the cross. But I want to take you to something, uh, and I want you to journey with me, and you have to keep an open mind, stay focused, uh, that God has something in store for each one of us. Amen. Quickly, let's cross-reference here to, over to Matthew. And you don't have to stand up and... I just want to pull you into the, the mindset here of where God is going to take us on this journey this morning. Are you ready? The 26th chapter describes a time before your Savior and mine went, before he got to the cross. On about the 36th verse, then cometh Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, Sit here ye while I go and pray yonder. What did he tell them to do? Sit, Sit here while I go and pray. And he took with him Peter 
and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. This was before the cross now. Then said he unto him, or them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, praying, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, see flesh was speaking a little bit before that. Nevertheless, not as I will, but let thy will. Or as thou will. Not my will, meaning not my flesh, but let your will be done. And he come up to the disciples and find them asleep and said unto Peter, What could could you not watch with, with me? Couldn't you just you couldn't have done this for an hour? Uh oh. Huh? You you couldn't have sat here and just waited one hour while I pray? Huh? Watch and pray and that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Bible says he went away again. So that's one time. Somebody say one. <laughs> went again the second time and prayed saying, Oh my father, talking to God again, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. He came and back from the second trip and he found them asleep again. Somebody say sleep. sleep. Don't say sleep on now because you'll find out that we've been sleeping. Amen. Found them asleep and for their eyes were heavy. I mean no doubt they'd been moving with Jesus and you, you can't keep up with Jesus. You know you'll get tired. And he left them and went again and prayed the third time, somebody say three, three. saying the same words. And I, I want to leave it right there. Jesus asked them to watch and pray. The first time, the second time, and the third time, it actually took three times of him talking to the Father before he was ready to go to the cross. In other words, if you look closely, three conclusive times he talked to the Father, you can hear words of flesh, like you and I would say. But then he would yield to the Father each time. And on the third time, how mercy Lord, he got victory. So folk that tell you that don't keep on praying about the same thing. You don't have to tell God a whole lot of this and just tell him once and it's all right. Don't know what they're talking about. Because sometimes you've got to go to the Father more than one time. It's evidence here that Jesus had to go three times before he could endure the cross. I never looked at this passage as the way I'm looking at it now. And it gave me an insight that, that, that if you want something from God, you've got to talk to him in prayer. Yes. If you want to communicate with God, yes. you can run your mouth all you want to, sing all you want to, shout all you want to, but if you really want to talk to God, 